Why do I find stuff on Facebook? What's so important and what product is someone trying to sell that I do not understand? Well, that product is going to be called the Privacy Pod. <laughs> You basically look like you're wrapped up in plastic wrap with a little stand around you. That's what the privacy pod is. Now, if someone tried to close the privacy pod while I was trying to have a conversation with them, it'd be so easy to just knock over. That'd be hilarious. Take my money. I think that just went all in my beer. My favorite part about these commercials is they always reuse the same footage over and over again. Magic. You? Magic Charles. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Looks like they've got that plastic there. Looks like I better walk away. Or, my personal favorite, you could just not go outside. So that way you wouldn't need to spend an ungodly amount of money, because I'm sure this thing's expensive. It's $3.99. That's been what the fuck is this? Now let's get into the actual video. Hi, Vsauce. Chad Channington here again. Let's take a look at some new stuff that I found on Dr. Phil. And this is the cringe counter. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cringe Counter. Now, I know Dr. Leroy Garrison took care of the last Dr. Phil episode, but you know, Chad Shaddixon's here for you today. So, let's get right into it. By the way, guys, we're rolling glass here today. I got a glass. When I was 20 years old, I broke into my mother's house and stole about $20,000 in cash and her checkbook. Well, now, this is starting off great. When I was 20 years old, I stole $20,000 from my mother. And I stole her checkbook. In 2013, I was wrongfully accused of cashing a bad check. I sold something online. A check was sent to me and I did not know it was fraudulent. Now hold on here. If you're selling stuff online and you get sent a check in the mail, that's usually a bad sign. I asked my neighbor to cash it because I did not have a bank account. All of a sudden, people started accusing me of stealing from my neighbor. This guy seems like an absolute winner, let me tell you that much. Another time, I enrolled in college and used the student funds to pay for most of my monsters. Student loans will fuck you the rest of your life if you don't pay them back. They will literally fuck you. Like, you cannot declare bankruptcy if you're in debt from student loans. That's just a known fact. Like, I'm gonna be buried up to my neck until I'm like 45, at least. Yep, that is all my mustache. I never intended to go to classes because it is really important for me to focus on being King Crimson. Note to self, don't drink stouts when you have a mustache. Oh, that puts a lot of stuff in, uh, in line for me. I stole $20,000 from my parents. I've lied about student loans so I could buy monsters for my front yard. All of this is to make sure I can keep up my persona as King Crimson. Well, you're gonna find this interesting, I think. Melissa says her husband, Nick, was a loving man with a nine to five job when they first met. But shortly after they got married, he started painting his face with scary makeup, dressing like a demonic clown, and composing vile music about killing people. You do you, dude. I do me, you do you. I yell into a camera, you pretend to be a demonic clown. You're good. Now, Melissa says Nick now goes by the name King Crimson and believes that he is going to become a famous murder rapper. Obviously. It's that goddamn meme that everyone shares online. Don't worry, your life isn't that bad. There's still somebody you went to high school with attempting to become a rapper. Making fun of people for chasing their dreams isn't exactly the coolest thing, but you know, let's, let's, Let's not cut this guy out immediately. Let's give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Hey, I'm rolling with the twister. Step my damn ma, leave a ransom for your sister. As I hit the mic and I throw it on the asphalt. Body starts to twitch and I'm feeding from the basalt. 
What was that? Dude, I vouched for you. I tried giving you the benefit of the doubt. What was that? Actually, no, that's my fucking jam. Ain't no rolling with the twister. Step my damn ma, leave a ransom for your sister. I think I found my new jam. What was that? Every time Dr. Phil opens his mouth, it's always the most savage statement ever. He's listening to the rap, just going, hmm, this is complete dog shit. I called the police. What was that? And I can back up Dr. Phil 100% of the way. What the hell was that? Melissa says King Crimson has taken over every aspect of Nick's life and he refuses to get a job, spending all of his time posting scary videos online and decorating their house with monsters for his live broadcast where he tries to convince people that he is the devil. The only God around of the wicked. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I am King Crimson. Well, Nick says his wife works. So he sees no reason to get a job because he really needs to focus on his art right now. Don't worry about your dreams or anything. Your family comes first. Your family should be your dream, not your music career of becoming a famous murder rapper. Secondly, no. Nick and I started having problems when this whole murder rap started happening. I thought it was a midlife crisis. 90% of the time, this would be a midlife crisis for most people. But I can see King Crimson maybe having ulterior motives. King is the name and you punks better know it. It's not a phase, Mom. I'm really like this. I love everything about it. Yeah, you see, I feel like he's in that state mindset right now. When I met Nick, I liked the bad boy image. I saw all of his tattoos and I was immediately attracted to him. Up until after we got married, I felt safe and cared for. But Nick worked in construction. You know, you see, that's always a great thing to hear. Oh, everything was working out great until we got married. That can also be said about um, 90% of modern relationships. Oh my God, everything was fantastic. We were so happy. And then we got married. That's when Nick started putting on clown makeup and listening to wicked rap music like the insane clown posse. Nick stopped having an interest in working. Initially, the problem was the hardcore music he was listening to. Then the issue became him performing and dressing up as a demonic clown. I don't even have anything to say about that part. I, I, I don't. Nick decided to name our son Crimson because of his rap name. This is my young Crimson. He is the new generation of the wicked. Kids just sitting there like, Dad, what are you doing? What is this thing on my hand? I really don't care. I'm too young to understand all of this. But hey, ooh, shiny. So let's just dig a little deeper and try to find some stuff out, shall we? Well, Nick says he has spent between sixty and seventy thousand dollars building his image as a murder rapper. Sixty to seventy thousand. Sixty to seventy. Sixty to seventy thousand dollars, and you have what to show for it? A yard full of monsters. Do you have anything else to show for it? Do you have like any mixtapes, any music released, anything? I'm gonna research this real quick. Like your profile picture. I regret everything that I've ever done. Now, you mentioned that uh, the Insane Clown Posse, the, the, the platinum uh, winning artist, at one time thought your music was really good. Oh boy, daddy's gonna need another one. My entire life is nothing but regret at this point. Now, Jay and Shaggy are currently on tour, but took some time out today to join us on Polycom. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I've actually been a fan of these guys for a long time. Wait, so does Dr. Phil know how magnets work? Fucking magnets, how do they work? They have a lot to say about King Crimson. So, Jay, Shaggy, welcome. Thanks. Thank you for having us. We sent you the video. We sent you the information to put him on your radar. So... What's your reaction to this? It's not even, I mean, I, obviously the guy looks up to us, so it's kind of hard to sit here and bury him. It doesn't take a hardcore expert or anybody like that to, to know that this guy's seriously lacking in talent, you know? There we go. When he's harming all the people that he loves, all the people around him, it becomes something less of his way of venting. It becomes greed. A real friend will tell you, man, you're embarrassing yourself. There's more to making music than mimicking what you think is great and what actually is great. Use what's great as inspiration to create your own music. Don't just rip it off and just say, hey, this is amazing. It's not. Take what you learn from other artists 
apply it to your own personal style, and then expel it so it becomes great. It's like 97 degrees in my room right now, this sucks. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please drop a like on it. If you want to subscribe, please drop a subscription on there. And if you want to make fun of me in the comments, please do. I would love to hear what you people have to say about me. Anyway, this has been Chad Chattingson, and this is another episode of The Cringe Counter. Cover!